Hi, Amy. It's so good to have you here with us. Hi. I still remember the first time you walked into our shop. I actually didn't know who you were. And the people <laughs> behind me had to tell me who you were. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> I'm nobody. So, I'm I'm not being I'm not being weird. I'm just sending out a story on Instagram. So go I for uh, it. Go for it. Roll for stories. There, now everybody knows where to find us. <laughs> okay, send. And now I'm present. Okay. Amazing having you today. <laughs> and, Thanks for having me. And as you can see, um, we we've been planning this for for uh, for a few days with you. We really wanted you with us on the show. We are impressed by how you guys are so healthy and how your kids avoid sugar and and how they love broccoli, as I found out. They <laughs> do weirdly enough. My kids been saying it's as good as broccoli. That that. <laughs> it seemed like we planned that. I promise we didn't. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to be at the same level as broccoli. That's that's a testimony, especially that they love it so much. Um, we went out and asked people in our social media if they had any questions for you. Um, we had a lot of customers who were very excited and I can see already we have a few people on the live. Um, that will increase. <laughs> Hi all. Hi. Also, we can upload this video on YouTube so people who couldn't make it at this point can actually see it at the later stage. Cool. We, we try to combine the questions as well. So some questions will be asked, would have been asked three or four times, but so you don't have to answer the same question three or four times, we just combine them all together. Sounds and good. none question, but the biggest comment we received back was, we love you, Amy. It was a very ah. common response from everyone. Even people who don't follow us, obviously your followers, your followers when you tagged us or so on, they just kept saying, we love you, Amy, we heart Amy. And so we had over a hundred stories just saying, we love you, Amy. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> and we replied, yeah. we have any questions for her. And they said, Tell her we love her. And I was like, okay, we will. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Take that love and put it in my pocket on this Monday. Thank you so much. I know, That's right? It's really totally nice. nice. <laughs> really nice. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. And obviously, they love you for a reason. And that we've been dealing with you now. I, I know the reasons. I know what kind of personality you are. Not only the charitable work you do, the inspiring work you do for young people, whether in the dancing, ballet, acting, everywhere. So... Mm -hmm. You totally earned that, and we love you too, Amy. <laughs> Thank you. You're you're flattering me now. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking you at all. It's only the truth. Now, before we start, can you share with us, please, why or what made you avoid using sugar in your day-to-day -day life? Um, it kind of well, it started growing up. My I was very lucky to have cool hippie parents. And my mom was very health conscious and we just didn't have a lot of sweet stuff in our house. So I have to say that I was pretty lucky not to have developed a sweet tooth. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard for me growing up as an adult. I, I ate sugar, but um, it wasn't that hard for me to transition into, a, I mean, I, we do eat sugar now, but it's very, very rare, especially mm -hmm. processed sugar, refined sugar. Um, when I was in my twenties, my mom, uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer and I decided to study nutrition because the first thing I asked her was what did the doctors tell you to eat like what's the diet pro protocol come on you're going to go into chemo this is big thing you know big thing and she, and at that point I don't know if they've changed a little bit and gotten better but they said oh they said food has nothing to do with cancer or health like what you eat has nothing to do with it yes we had so many patients that were going through chemo and we had so many patients who actually said they needed to focus on their diet just to be able to beat cancer. So that's I mean, quite surprised what they told you. <laughs> it's bizarre. Sometimes the medical field, as brilliant and as smart as people are in the medical field, sometimes when it comes to nutrition, I my my mind is blown that, you know, they'll do they'll do chemo before they'll do like a raw diet or something that could change your chemistry anyway so i i just thought well that's crazy so i started studying for my mother to put together a diet plan for her and then of course as i 
dove into the nutrition world, I thought, well, I can't not know this. So I ended up studying for three years and getting my degree wow. while I was in a ballet company. And then it just kind of went from there. And I did a lot of testing on myself because I thought I can't tell someone, especially someone with a, a lifetime of eating in a certain way, sugar addiction is very real. I can't just tell them to, oh, give up sugar, have an apple instead. That's not realistic. It's too hard. Um, and it's not fun and it shouldn't, you know, your life shouldn't be not fun. As you know, you have somehow made it fun for people to eat healthy. But that's, that's yeah, that's how it started really with, with um, my mom and then just trying it on myself. We, my husband and I, Anthony, we, um, we went pretty hardcore and cut out all sugar. We ate so well and I felt, I haven't actually had such a clean diet as that time. Uh, but I often think about how good I felt when I was <laughs> eating that way, like just super clean, high nutrient dense foods and no junk food ever. And that was the best I ever felt. And it, as you mentioned earlier, sugar is quite addictive as well. So unfortunately, you kind of enter that vicious cycle where you need more sugar to feel better. And then you eat the sugar and then you feel a bit uh, slouchy again and then you need more sugar to feel better and then you need more sugar and right so it's, it's a it's a biochemical reaction it's a biological reaction but it's a it's a heavy emotional um addiction well, for people and, and, and people eat to soothe themselves or they eat when they're excited i mean look at like every celebration is is a cake or a birth you know something sweet um and that's just kind of how we have developed with our cultures and that's hard to get away from. Definitely, definitely. Uh, oh, which reminds me, today it's the launch of the whole um, buy, uh, eat out, help out uh, scheme. And I was just gobsmacked by the amount of things there that are discounted. They're like, don't buy one, get one free. It's bad for your health, but you can buy it at half price. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I missed, no, I missed, is this a, is this a, thing that's it, happening in England? I've missed it. Yeah. Oh. We're, we're lucky you're locked down in England, so you, you have the opportunity to try this. But uh, yeah, so basically, whenever someone goes out and they pay the bill, uh, some places are independent places, healthy. The only rule is that you can't uh, take the item and have to take it as a delivery or take out. You have to have it on the premises or be able to have it on the premises, not just take out. Mm. So um, that's the only rule, but the government pays 50% of the bill and the customer pays the other 50%. My shock is like suddenly you get things like ice cream from a very well-known uh, marble, like uh, arch bra brand, and the ice cream is suddenly knocked down to, to 50 pence. You get oh things gosh. like uh, Triple G's burger is suddenly knocked down to like a pound. And oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know about this. I, I, I don't I don't read the news very often, so I miss a lot. I'm not current. Yeah, <laughs> Just not to me. warn you. I was severely depressed when I saw that. So. Whoa. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so um, we'll move on to the next question. Um, did you see any improvements on your skin once you reduced or gave up sugar? And did you feel or realize any other improvements health-wise? I I didn't notice so much a uh, difference with my skin because I has, was already sort of very, very low sugar anyway. But my husband at the time, he had suffered a lot of uh, teenage acne and it was kind of going into his 20s and his skin totally wow. cleared up. I mean, he, he really felt the benefits very, very sharply because he was, he had a very poor diet when around the time that we started doing this. Um, he was having bad nightmares. He had insomnia. He had these blackouts, which I now know was, you know, his blood sugar was just all over the place. Um, he even fainted on stage one time during, he was dancing and there was on the stage of the uh, English National Opera House and he was doing these turns and the soprano was singing her aria and then she stopped and Anthony just went boom, like flat on the stage. So stuff like that was happening. So when we took sugar out of our diet, he really was a marked difference. He slept better, his skin cleared up. He wasn't having his weird um, blackout thing. So he really noticed a big difference. And I would say that for me, it was more of an energetic thing because 
a lot of people falsely identify, I know this is a later question, some people falsely identify sugar with energy and it's quite the opposite. What it does is it causes peaks and troughs and you crash and you don't have sustained energy. So I noticed when I cut sugar out, I was more energetic all the time mm. as opposed to getting a boost and then, you know, Definitely. it was just sort of sustained high energy, which is good. Exactly, because also sugar gives you that peak, but then you go low and then you go back and you need to take sugar to go back up and then low. See, so it's it insulin. Sure. Insulin is a, insulin, they're finally, you know, coming to see what an important hormone that is and how, how it affects people. Yeah, yeah, even emotionally, um, even emotionally. So totally understand from my side, um, I've always <laughs> been very low sugar because I'm type one diabetic. Right. But the same, well, a person with diabetes, as it's politically correctly known now. But oh, really? uh, yeah, you're apparently you're not supposed to be calling a diabetic person diabetic. It's a person with diabetes because it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't label them as a yeah. Well, I'm a diabetic and I'm okay. How do you it. feel about that? I think people are so sensitive. How do you I feel about that? About it, I was like, for the last twenty five years of my life, thirty years, I've been diabetic. What's wrong with? That? People are very, very, well, wow. Anyway, okay. Well, well good to know. As I said, I'm obviously not current and not very politically correct. So, okay, person with diabetes. Good to know. Thanks, Jolie. Good Lord. No, but um, for me, I've always had my sugar much lower. But for example, um, Adrian, my husband, he used to, he he's not into sweet things, but if you give him like an almond croissant, that's his weakness. He will go for it. And the same with Anthony. He realized his skin texture was much better. He realized um, there were much less wrinkles. And yeah. even for me, I realized my skin, like the days when I don't have even like very, I do need sugar sometimes because I am diabetic. I, sometimes it goes low. So days when I do skip that or I don't need that and things are nicely balanced, I realize even my skin feels much more hydrated, less mm. wrinkles. Mm. All that so definitely, I see the effect of that for us as well. Yeah. Cool. Next question is, how long have you gone without sugar? And when did you first notice the difference? Or with lower sugar, but you said since your childhood. But maybe when I, did you first notice the difference? Um, I... I, I didn't, I like I said, I wasn't really, because we didn't have a lot of refined sugar growing up, I much, my weakness is much more, I'd say, savory, like give me a bag of crisps and, you know, then we'll talk kind of thing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, all this crisp tacos. Um, so I, I, I feel very fortunate in that way that I haven't really felt like I have suffered from sugar addiction and thus I haven't felt a, a huge difference. I I feel very satisfied with a little bit of sweet. Um, I don't have, and I think the most interesting thing was being married to someone who had the, the opposite. He was not, he did not grow up with a good diet. Um, he wasn't given nutritious foods. And as a teenager, he was completely addicted to, I remember when we first got together and everything in his kitchen was white, like white flour, oh, wow white pasta, white sugar, white powdered donuts, you know, and I was sort of going, I bought a bag of spinach and he was going, where's the white ranch, ranch dressing to oh, dip no. this in, you know? So he would, I'm speaking on his behalf, but he would uh, gladly tell you that for him, it was a revelation. It was, it changed his life completely. So I, the question is how long have I gone without sugar when I first noticed the difference? I, I was more noticing with him and I was observing it with him. And did it take long to notice the difference or was it more? No, no, it started right away. Now it wasn't easy and the cravings were very difficult. And it was, I mean, it's like, it's like giving up a drug and your brain wants it and your, it your emotions drug. want it. It is a drug and your brain, you know, your brain operates on sugar. Really. It wants to operate on the, on the right sugar, but it, it, it will crave that and it'll, establish these neurotransmitter pathways that want that sugar and they want it fast and furious and I want it in the form of a donut. You know, that's that's what your brain is gonna tell you. Love how specific you are there. Yeah. No <laughs> thing I don't I don't I don't want a pair. Yeah. Remember you actually bought from us a box of donuts for that birthday. Yes I did. <laughs> and I love donuts. I love baked goods. I don't want, you know, I feel a bit <clears throat> 
I don't want to misrepresent here and be one of those people that's like, oh, well, I don't, I don't like sugar, so it's easy for me. I do like sugar, and I get it, and I want it, um, but I know that it it just doesn't serve me well. And, and having studied it, that's a big thing, too. When you actually study it and you get down to the biology and you go past just the sensation of delight on your tongue and you realize once you swallow it and you've enjoyed it in your mouth, but now it's in your body and it's gonna wreak havoc on your body for the next several hours or longer. And then a lifetime of accumulating this, it's that's what leads to disease and breakdown. So it's not worth it. A moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody thing to all about that with all your dancing and activity and everything. <laughs> Well, that's that's a good point, Jilly, because um, I was also I was a very thin person, and Anthony was very thin. We were dancers; we were naturally so. In a way, some sometimes it was harder because if you didn't feel like you were carrying weight, why do I need to stop eating sugar? Why do I need to stop eating junk food? I don't look like I'm unhealthy. I look like I'm, you know, skinny and can leap around, but. The, uh, the other health problems, they manifest in different ways, not just carrying it in, in a form of weight. That's a very valid point because a lot of people say, hey, I need sugar, look at me, I'm gonna disappear if I stop sugar, but they don't realize the other negative effects of it. And, yeah. and how it impacts them. Yeah, you ah, can be a very unhealthy, skinny person. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't need to worry about the skinny. <laughs> well, you know, it is better yeah. not to be anyway, so. <laughs> Well, uh, the next question is, what is your favorite sweetener or natural sugar and why? Um, I like, I like working with dates. They're very, <laughs> that's cool. like a business contract. I like working, <laughs> dates are cool people. Um, what dates are we talking, Amy? <laughs> I'm yeah, <joking. laughs> yeah, speed dating. <laughs> no, I like I like the flavor of dates. I um, stevia is a tricky one with me. It depends on the who has produced it, and then if you do too much stevia, it can get that weird kind of off taste. And the same with the alcohol sugars. So I think you just have to kind of, and it depends on the recipe. So that I'm getting a convoluted answer, but it it has to do with how much you need and in what recipe. So I don't really have one, but I like I like. I t when I if I want um, sweetness in a smoothie or a baked good, quite off quite often I'll use chopped up dates or pureed dates. Yeah, for me as well. If uh, well, for me I use stevia because obviously I'm a diabetic as well. But if I'm trying to do something with a little bit of sugar, just because of a hypo <clears throat> or, or that, dates would be where I head usually. They're very okay. they give really satisfying outcomes, especially dates and walnut ice cream. Mm. But. Uh, <laughs> Which but would you, make <laughs> right, you, you're coming at from a total like keep your insulin levels steady, no, which no. which is an even better. I mean, yeah, because you can overdo it with with the good stuff as well, you know, with dates and natural sugars. So there's a um, a, not a Mars bar and basically inject for that. And I was thinking, what are you doing? Your body is going through a lot of roller coasters. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. But yeah, as you said, stevia is what we use in Yamzi. I'm allergic to all alcohol, whether drink or sugar alcohols or this or that, basically anything fermented. So for me, uh, the whole sorbitol, as per, I know people say they're bad. But for me, it's even worse because right. I get an allergic reaction to them. Uh, stevia is my choice if I'm going with the low carb option or keto option. But as you said, it's really hard. Stevia can be twice as sweet as sugar or 200 times as sweet as sugar. Anywhere in between, you go wrong, and it's that horrible taste of stevia. So it's yeah. quite tricky to work the magic of. Uh, yeah, stevia. you guys get it so right with your stuff because quite oh. often with with things <laughs> that are not pure, you know, refined sugar, you can really taste. I mean, we, the, the term Anthony I use is like, oh, this tastes healthy, which is not a compliment. <laughs> when something tastes healthy and you're like, Ugh, I want it to taste like the good stuff. And, and somehow you guys do it. So I don't know how you do it. You know, that's an amazing testimony for us. Thank you. So uh, what are your favorite naturally occurring sweet treats? I think you mentioned dates already, but I think more like sweet treats, maybe, fruits or 
Well, one of the questions was fruits, but we combined it with a few others. So sweet I'm a, suck, I'm a sucker for watermelon. I could eat watermelon until the cows come home, especially when I was pregnant. I just watermelon, 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 uh, which is an interesting segue to my, my twins. They are turning five in September. For every birthday, they have watermelon cake, and they love it. So we take a giant watermelon, and we carve it up in the form of like a three or four layer cake, and then we stick berries on it and flowers and... Um, make it really fancy and pretty and that's their birthday cake and they love it and they you know they're cool with that they don't feel deprived or anything they they love watermelon cake it's a it's a special thing so when anthony had a birthday in may and we did a watermelon cake and they like to make it so do you guys deliver watermelon uh, cake <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome and any other favorite treats well, I, I, like I said, I am not, I do like sugar and I am a real sucker if home baked goods, like a homemade cherry pie, you know, some of those Southern, I, I grew up in South Texas. So some of those like, uh, you know, sweet potato pie, or cherry pie, some of that. And, and, I, and I like, I like good quality ice cream. I like homemade ice cream. So I, I like that stuff and I do eat it, but it's pretty rare and it's, and, and I don't need much because I formed a habit of a yeah. little bit of satisfying. And then, you know, you just go, okay, well, I know what I'm doing to my body. It's all right. Better enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. And if you're not taking <clears throat> big amounts of frequency, your body will appreciate it more than having constant access to it. Yeah. And, and that, and I've noticed with people, it does change once you start to, pull back the taste of it and the need from it. Your, your brain, your brain in so many ways, biochemically and emotionally, you need much less. You're satisfied much quicker and you can still enjoy it. It's not like Definitely. you can never have a cupcake again. You can, but yeah, you don't, you don't need and five. Even people on a diet have cheat days and so on. So yeah. um, it's you know, <laughs> more sustainable long-term if you try to make your diet more, more future proofed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Question number five, um, when you trained with dancing and et cetera, didn't you need sugar? Actually, the question was specifically asking, didn't you need a sugar rush? Right. And what did you have? Uh, the answer is no, because even dancers know that you, you need energy all day long. When you get up, you have what's called company class. So you have a very hard uh, ballet class for two hours. Then you rehearse all day long, then you go to the theater and you have a performance for three hours. I mean, you're, you're exhausted. So it's it's like constant consumption of calories, but they have to be high fat, high protein, sustainable, complex carbs, a bit, you know, a lot of dancers would eat oatmeal, you know, big tubs of oatmeal with berries and nuts. Uh, you see dancers snacking all the time from their bags, but not, not many do, not many dancers do junky sugary candy stuff for that burst of energy because you need it all day long yeah yeah so it's not um it doesn't really work makes sense yeah how did a oh i like this question how we were chatting about that before we started the live how did amy discover yumzi and what are her and the family's favorite treats so i discovered yumzi uh through a friend of mine from vikings was coming over to visit London and her sister was here <laughs> and her sister at the time was, I think she was keto. I can't remember. She was gluten-free, sugar-free and it was her birthday and we were going to Greenwich and I was just furiously Googling going like, I want to bring a birthday treat, but um, obviously I want her to be able to have it. So I just, I Googled the impossible, <laughs> delicious, healthy, sugar-free, high protein, birthday cake in Greenwich <laughs> and there you are so Amazing. that's a manifestation the impossible <laughs> happened and then I ordered like 12 donuts and it was great awesome and uh I'm hoping she enjoyed it as well that's yes. why you, you stayed in touch with us great okay <laughs> um do you avoid anything other than the sugar in your diet yes uh low quality fats, nasty, nasty things. So we're talking um, the, the, a lot of the vegetable oils, 
the, the big vegetables like the canola oil, sunflower oil um, that you see in those big clear plastic bottles. They're all rancid. They're, they're so bad for you. They're so nasty. And then even worse, people fry in those oils. So that destabilizes it even more. So chemically, it's one of the worst things you can do to your body is have those uh, rancid, unstable, um, polyunsaturated oils. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I very rarely, if I eat anything fried, I make, I like, I fry things in coconut, which has a, a high, um, fat boiling point or even a good, if you can find like a good, uh, organic peanut oil. Um, so it's tough, but I, but I eat I a lot of peanut oil. We use that? coconut. I never worked with peanut oil. I only use coconut oil. It's hard to find organic peanut oil because it's such a heavily sprayed crop. But if you can get good quality, it has a high smoke point, so you can fry in that. that. But coconut oil is fantastic. Good to know. I'm 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 definitely gonna start looking up peanut oil. And ghee, um, butter. I love grass fed butter. So I eat there. We have a high. I'd say we have a high fat diet, but it's all clean, oh, clean, yeah. clean fats. Yeah. Good, good. You yeah. need that. It gives you the sustained energy and doesn't yeah. have the effects of everything else. Yeah, and I mean, like low fat, no fat stuff is gross to me. It's well, not only that the taste is not good, but also what they do in order to boost the taste. They've taken yeah. out all the fat, so then the product doesn't taste good anymore. So then they add this crappy cheap sugar, well, corn good. syrup, and that kind of or vegetable oils and fillers, and it's just it's nasty stuff. Definitely. Doesn't Definitely. taste good. And the taste, the taste is not there anymore. It's like you're eating something that's been having life yeah. out of it. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather eat something with, you know, full fat butter, real sugar, and just and eat a smaller amount with all, with those yeah. real ingredients than a low fat diet bar or something or other that's supposed to be healthy for you. And they all they've done is they stripped away all the good things that your body can't digest very well and packed it with lots of chemical synthetic stuff. Exactly. Poor, poor body. Oh, I hear a baby up there. I was going to say, if you need to go to him or... No, well, Anthony, if he needs if he needs to nurse, you can bring him down. Just, just have him under the, <laughs> under the frame here. <laughs> I've, done, I've done so many interviews now with, with a baby sort of secretly down here nursing away. So. <laughs> I did. I did a podcast. Um, it was about films, and we were we were talking about politics, and we were talking about you know fem feminism and glass ceilings and Hillary Clinton pro or con or whatever. And then the guy who was like, "Do I hear a baby?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm nursing a baby as I'm talking about female presidential candidates." So I thought it was a good, <laughs> good combination. <laughs> yeah, we can do it all. Talk about politics and breastfeed our babies. You know what? That's the one thing I'm really bad at. I love politics. I love doing things, but I cannot multitask. Try to catch me multitasking. It's just not going to work. Like if I'm walking our dog, there is no way you're going to catch me texting or doing something else because the dog will just happily walk on the street and get himself killed or something. Well, maybe you have power I'm focus. <laughs> I'm really bad with multitasking. No way I can do it. Well, you're single minded, right? So Very. There you go. <laughs> That's a valuable thing. Barracuda. There we go. Yay. Thanks for giving it giving it a positive outlet, out, outcome there. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, what are your top three superfoods or ingredients that you like using? Uh, I love, at the moment, I'm doing lots of sprouting. Sprouting oh. is amazing. So home sprouting. It's super easy. It's They're some of the most nutrient densely packed nutrient uh, nutritious foods you can do it at home it's cheap it's easy it's healthy so i recommend everyone to do that i have at the moment i have a i can show you what i have hold on two seconds yeah, I'd love to. so for anyone watching sprouting is where you take the seeds plant them uh, on very shallow area and then just when they start germinating you you pick up the benefits of these uh, germinated seeds. Um, oh wow! So this is uh, I'm do I'm currently doing broccoli and alfalfa sprouts. It's it's a company called Bio Snacky. Um, okay. Let me write looks, down. This looks fancy, but it's not. You just you soak the seeds, then you put them in the tears. It takes about 
three or four days. You just have to water them twice. It's so, so easy. And then in the end, I have a big um, canister full of pea sprouts in that I did yesterday. And they're, and they're just so healthy for you. So I love sprouts. You can put Definitely. them on everything. If you don't like the taste, you can blend them, freeze them, and put them in your smoothie. You won't even taste it. <laughs> um, this you isn't... Put the spoon on the smoothie, in the smoothie, or do you just blend them within the smoothie, or...? Yeah, just blend them and just throw, just throw a handful of sprouts in your smoothie. And, you know, you, the, the taste of the berries or whatever people... You, probably most people would do fruit smoothies, I'm assuming, but you just throw some sprouts in there, and you've got instant vegetable goodness that you probably won't even taste i've tried them in salads but i never thought about just adding it to smoothies so thanks for the hand um i love this probably isn't going to be a very popular answer but i love sardines i love sardines okay. they're so healthy for you such You're a good fat little i like these little sardines that are packed with jalapenos in olive oil oh, okay so it's mm. not as uh as no, the other one <laughs> and there uh so and then i love um i've gotten really diligent about having olive oil with almost every every day i drizzle some um oil. cold pressed extra virgin olive oil it's just uh, some people in the anti-aging biohacking community claim that olive oil is the secret for living forever so and mediterranean yeah. communities might back that up as well um, so i just there you go so i keep a bottle of olive oil it's important uh for listeners if you don't already know this going back to the the oils and the fats you have to it's it's not a tremendously stable oil in terms of you don't want to cook it with high heat so keep it cool drizzle it on your foods afterwards and also keep that bottle which should be dark glass dark brown or dark uh, green, keep it in a cupboard, cool, away from heat, away from sunlight, because you want to keep those oils intact. That's the problem with some other fats, like, you know, beautiful walnut oil or walnuts themselves. They go rancid so easily because it's a delicate oil. I don't think people, a lot of people keep their cooking oils right by the stove no. in a clear plastic bottle. <laughs> but how do we know this, you know, unless we're, unless we study it? I studied it. Yeah. That's how I know. So, yeah. Also, I think the source makes a big difference. We're really lucky. Yes, we yeah. have one of our friends who every year brings us a harvest of like bottles of oil from Greece because they have a great, exactly, they have a huge farm with oil. And oh. uh, it was really funny. <laughs> it was really heaven. funny. I know, right? And it tastes so different from what you buy in the shops. Yes. So um, it was really funny because one time I was asking her, can you please bring me some of the olive leaves? And she just looked at me and she said, we throw the leaves on the floor and I was like, don't throw anything from the tree. I eat the olives. I'll drink the olive oil. I'll use the olive oil. I'll drink the leaves in tea. And she was like, good for you. No, but that's but, true. That's yeah, really full of antioxidants. They're really good. Good. Use the whole plant. Love it. Yeah. So uh, it's really important to also the source you get it from because the last thing you want is because it's fully sprayed with pesticides and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to bring them to me, Anthony? <laughs> Are you sure you don't need a little break or something? No, it's all right. Multitask, multitask. Julie. <laughs> I have to learn that. <laughs> cool. So, um, you want to say hi to a baby? Hello. Yeah. You want to say hi? hi? Oh, I love the little mom. Hello. <laughs> yeah. This is Archer. Hello. Hello. Hey, hi to the listeners. <laughs> okay, he's going to have a snack. I can keep talking no to you. <laughs> Let him enjoy. Um, have your kids ever tried sugar? I know when you came to the shop, you said they were avoiding sugar, sugar. But yeah. how do you please their cravings? They. It's been really interesting with the kids. Um, so we knew that we, we knew we wanted to do no sugar before we had kids but we also knew we didn't want to be those crazy parents where you know the kids at the birthday party and everyone's having a cupcake and our kids are in the corner having a carrot stick that's just that's no fun and it's kind of it's not sustainable and it feels kind of mean and so we just we've we have from the time they were young i think one very very important key to success 
is developing the children's palate. So the more sweetness you give them early on, the more they're going to crave it, and the more they're going to want it. So we, their first foods were all green vegetables. We even were careful about bananas. We didn't really, you know, bananas are such a popular thing to give to little ones once they start eating solids. But we were just, we were cultivating their palate. So we gave them sardines. We gave them green vegetables. Um, it had to feature in that. <laughs> what's that? Sardines and jalapenos had to feature in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it has worked and we've been pleasantly surprised and it's not, you know, they, from time to time they've asked, especially since as they, they're almost five. So, you know, they, they have been to birthday parties now and, and once in a while they've asked to try and we, oh, we always say yes, but we, when we go to parties, we bring our own things as well. So they have stuff, yeah. they have things that are special to them that they like. So they like these little, they're a hundred percent fruit kind of, like fruit smashed up things. I don't even know what, what they're called. They're like fruit frozen smoothies. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's just, it's no refined sugar, right? So they have these fruit things that they like. Um, they like these date bars called uh, naked bars. Mm. So we just always have on hand the things that they like that they consider treats so that when they're in a situation, if they want to join in, but we're not keen on giving them the, you know, gross fluorescent nasty cake we can say, well, yeah, you can try it, but here's your treat, you know, sit there and have, so far it's worked out. And they have tried a couple of things. One time we were at a friend's house and um, she had gummy bears and she offered our kids gummy bears and they didn't have never seen them. And of course they're like, what is this? This looks fun. It's oh, the a shape of a bear. Exciting and, yeah. and so they asked if they could try it. And we said, yes, you can. And they both spit them out. That's they tried them and then they, I know, they tried them and then they spit them out. And quite often when we've let them try things, they'll try it and then they'll say, oh, it's too sweet for me and they'll give it back. That's amazing. You did train their palate. I think that's, yeah, it's what it is. So, and we're, and we're trying very hard to, like I said, keep the balance of, we don't want them to feel um, like they're being denied and we don't want it. We don't also want sugar to be this big exciting forbidden thing it's like yeah. you know it's how you're gonna i'm sure we're gonna deal with alcohol when they're teenagers is <laughs> you know <laughs> the rule is you can't have it but also if you want to try it in our presence and also it's a regulated thing and it's not a big yeah. you know thing that they're gonna uh, i don't want them to sneak it behind my back you know i don't want them to feel yeah. like that so we're open and about it. The approach is very useful, it's very wise because when we were kids, our parents, uh, we grew up in a Mediterranean kind of culture. Right. So my mom's uncle was making wines, my uncle was making wines. And if you see the adults having something, and I remember my cousins would ask, can we have some wine? And their parents would be like, no, you can't have wine, of course. And then my cousins would wait until the adults have finished their food and drinks and everything. And they would sneak and get some of the wine. Well, my brother and I would stare at them shocked because when we asked our parents during the meal, <clears throat> can we try the wine? They would be like, okay, there you go, have a sip. And we would have a sip and mm, it's nice or Ugh, it's horrible. And we give it back and that's it. Yeah. But we didn't need to sneak behind them to actually take the wine behind people's backs and obviously unregulated in amounts that are unregulated as well. And then it leads to the parents being angry. and yeah. being So very yeah. wise there. Yeah, so far it's worked out. Um, and we're just going with it here. <laughs> Y'all finished? Uh, someone's having a milk coma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> yeah, he's happy now. Milk drunk. Uh, <laughs> milk drunk, that's the word. Cool. And the next question is more about Anthony. So you're going to be talking on his behalf again. Yeah, he's uh, here somewhere. He can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say something wrong, he's going to jump. No, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, we have a balcony right here and see if he looks over. Um, what are you saying about me? So the question is, what are Anthony's non-healthy or guilty pleasures? Um, he, I'd say probably baked goods for him as well. And he definitely, he would, he would say that he struggles a lot more than I did because he, he had a, you know, half of his life was raised on junk food. And he said, you know, anytime he got, money as a kid, he was straight to the, 
um, little corner store to buy as much junk food as he could. And, oh, wow. and nobody ever told him that he couldn't. And even worse, he had this well-meaning Scottish grandmother who he was a skinny little boy. And she said, you know, you need to fatten up and you need energy so you can eat oh, wow. as much sugar as you want. Because in her mind, which is kind of an old school thing, and his mom kind of did this as well, is like sugar is energy, right? Kids need energy. So kids can have as much sugar as they want. So that that's what he was indoctrinated with. So it, he had to really backtrack, rewire his brain. And, and even though he knows and he feels the effects of it now, um, it's still hard for him. And it's hard for him to, to have a little. He, he always triggers him and he wants more. And he's much better now, but it's like, he doesn't want one donut. He wants a dozen donuts. Okay. That sounds you know? like <laughs> I think it's common. It's normal. It's, you know, it's, an, it's, it's having had an addiction. It's a recovering addict. It's Truthfully. In the way, as you said, since we were kids, I mean, we grew up in a country where yes, you had chocolates and this and that, but they were not made there. So they were overly expensive. They right. were overly expired. A lot of them arrived expired from other oh, countries. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So we grew up with more like fruits and things like that. So like when we were having a diabetes uh, chat a few weeks ago, and there was a body trainer, a bodybuilder, uh, myself, and a doctor. And one of the questions that was asked to the three of us is like, if you had a break from diabetes, what would you enjoy? And they were saying like donuts and this and that and i was kind of avoiding to answer the question and then when it was my turn they were like what would you enjoy and i was like okay no judgment and they said no judgment i said okay for me it would be mangoes it would be muesli oh, how interesting <laughs> mangoes muesli yeah but well for me it would be fruits watermelon in huge right. amount like the right. whole watermelon kind of with ice and you know like they do it in mexico and yes. just like fruits uh peaches and and i and they were just laughing and i was saying guys we said no judgment why are you laughing <laughs> that's so i mean wow i mean i really i think people with diabetes not diabetic people um you really <laughs> You really do. I, I forget that it is truly no sugar, like no, uh, I, when I think of no sugar, it's... Take what they want, Amy. Other diabetics take what they want, they just inject for it. For me, I think I was really lucky, um, right. other than having hip parents. Uh, I mean, they were okay with sugar, they would have sugar, but obviously they would say, don't eat too much sugar if you don't want to inject insulin now. So it was right. that, you know, if I don't want to be injected again, I'm going to avoid having too much sugar. Right, so right, right. I think what made it even better for us was the fact that we grew up in a country where fruit was readily available and cheaper and everything, while chocolates, biscuits, you risk things like very bad chemicals, hence the West would not sell them and they would send them to this country, or things like expired. Isn't that ironic as like you were somehow deprived from Western whatever, <laughs> Western garbage? Well, lucky you. <laughs> Other kids would still eat it, but it was like, you, you had the option, if you eat this, you don't have that, if you eat this, you have to inject this, this and that. So even though my brother, luckily in touch wood and everything, he is not a person with diabetes, but still, like, he, he eats sugar when he craves it, but he's not going to be craving it as much as any of our friends or, right. or my husband. Like, Adrian's weakness is an almond croissant. But if you give him a donut, if you give him anything else, he'll be like, no, I'm good. No, I'm wow, good. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> Which is the same for him. He grew up eating more fruits and so on rather than uh, processed. Right. Well, that's bar. exactly, the, that's the development of the palate. And I, yeah. it is, it's, it's horrifying to me when I see, this sounds like terrible judgment, so I have to be careful how I shape my words because it's, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't know any better. Yeah. And I, I put the blame on really our, you know, our governments, the food pyramids, whatever they are allowing to be promoted in our food chains. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if a lot of parents, oh, let's, let's give the baby some ice cream. I, I've seen weird things. Like I was at a cafe the other day and there was a, a little bitty baby, like a little person, little like guy. Like yes, is. little bit, I mean, maybe six months. I mean, maybe solid age, but really tiny baby. 
um, and the the parents were giving him. Um, my computer just said, said something. The parents were giving him chocolate brownie, and the baby was actually kind of like doing this, but they were like, "Come on, it's sweet, it's fun, it's cute. Have some." You compared to the mom's milk. I I don't know. It's and I understand the compulsion because it's it's so. F it's like sharing the joy of sweetness. You know, you want to give your baby an ice cream. You want to give them something oh, sweet because it's, <laughs> it's fun and, you know, but it, if, you de if you just think down to the chemicals, it's not worth it. Don't give your kids sugar. They're going to end up having sugar and eating sugar before you need to because it's doing them no good. It's not giving them energy. It's, it's only bad. That's the truth. It's only bad. And from There's a very problem. young age, it's almost like they're forcing them to get used to that sugar. Yeah. Okay, you said the kid was going backwards. Yeah, he didn't want it. He didn't want it. He didn't need it. It was all. It was all about the parents' enjoyment. They were excited because they had a new baby, and yeah. they wanted to share their chocolate brownie with the baby because they loved the brownie. And I think another problem is also how things are portrayed. If if I'm allergic to peanuts. And someone tells me peanut oil and says it's good for you. I'm gonna be dead. So the government would totally sue that person. Same thing that right. happened in the cafe and so on about and bread and all of this. But the problem is when it comes to things like sugar and the definition of healthy, uh, we find a lot of brands that actually have very high sugar, and they just make it low fat, and then they say oh, our low calorie product is so good for you and it's so healthy and we don't use the word healthy because we realize for someone healthy might mean high fat high protein right but for right. someone else it might mean low fat because they have i don't know heart disease or so on so we avoid using the word healthy although we take it in so many dimensions but then you see someone selling a bar that's low calorie but very high sugar and they're like oh my healthy bars and i'm thinking how is that healthy? Or, or for example, things that are made, um, like for example, fruit juice. Fruit juice is okay in small quantities, but then when you see the advertisement and the kid is like drinking from the bottle, it's just wrong. It's it's you're giving. And you them know what? You know what, Jolie? They they know it. I get very. I'm gonna get on my pedestal now. Thank I get you. very angry about about these things because they know what it does. It's these things are not healthy and they'll slap a marketed trademarked logo on their, you know, with like a check mark that says heart healthy. It's not heart healthy. It's a trademark logo that they have patented so that they can use it as a piece of advertising and it's total deception. It's profit driven and it makes me furious because it has created an entire population and culture who blindly buy into this advertising and they use absolute garbage as ingredients. They're using high fructose yeah. corn syrup, which is nasty crap. So I, again, I just have to compliment you guys because the, the level, the, the poor ethics in our food chain is scary. And yeah. what, what people will do to sell and to market to children. I mean, they target children because, you know, they, and they I, could, I could go on categories as well for example i remember before we started young we were walking in, um, in, in a mall in a shopping center um and i remember i saw one of these very ah! and, and they sell cupcakes and they were advertising this brand new i was excited i went for it right <laughs> and right i was asking the lady of course use normal flour and she said well we have gluten-free flour i said okay i can count that in my insulin no problem so the grams and this and that i calculated the whole thing i injected my insulin and i ate the sugar-free cupcake okay and minutes afterwards i was like oh, i can't breathe oh my gosh <laughs> and i was oh telling God. adrian like my feet feel like they're cemented on the floor i can't even lift my feet up Oh and so I checked it and shock and horror it was it was like extremely high and I said to him I calculated everything like I calculated everything correctly so we went back to the to the school and I asked them and I see the first three ingredients I understand if you want to show me all the ingredients but can I see like the highest ingredients and yeah. the first one was flour the second one was coconut sugar <sighs> 
And I said to them, you do realize <clears throat> sugar, you can't call it sugar free. Yeah, it's not it's not refined sugar. I said I understand. Say refined sugar free <laughs> for a diabetic like me. When you say sugar free, we assume stevia, or we assume right. stevia. I have absolutely right. no on the blood glucose. Right. But I it's said, sneaky. You almost killed me because of your sugar free statement. <laughs> so I don't know. So they were pleading ignorance, but I think most of the time it's sneaky. Oh, they do know it's refined sugar free, but there is nothing telling them by law they need to say refined sugar free. So right. it's down to their goodwill. Right. Although there are stronger laws coming up, but unfortunately until they're enforced and people have to pay fines, they're not going to abide by them. But uh, yeah, or, or even scary. Canada, you guys, if you hold any sugar-free pack and read the ingredients, it's going to be with maltitol. Right. And maltitol is a sugar. Right, right, so, right. <laughs> it's sugar-free. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's hard to, and this is why people are just like, oh, what can I eat then? For goodness sakes, you know, it gets, gets a, it can feel overwhelming. Like everything's bad for you, but, you know, we're not, we're not taught good foundational nutrition in schools. Kids don't know it. You know, we're not, it's just, it's not, even with all of this pandemic stuff and everybody is gunning for a drug or a vaccine and that's fine. But how about in the meantime, we all revisit our diet and, you know, go back to having a high functioning immune system in the first place so that it's not a problem when a bad flu comes around. But yeah. I just don't feel like I've heard a word of that coming from our leaders, which is like, let's let's talk about our immune systems, everybody. Instead of, you know, locking you all down, why don't we all talk about organic gardening? Yeah. yeah. Get political now. Those <laughs> who don't have a garden. Sprouted, that's, that's really right. Point. Um, it's unfortunately a very valid point and very heartbreaking because as you said, they know the implications, they know the outcomes, but I guess it's cheaper or more profitable to do otherwise. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Moving on. So would you say, see, that was a question about Anthony and we went into all these different <laughs> <laughs> It always gets political. <laughs> So he keeps trying to say, oh, you want to say hi again? Okay. Hey, little guy. Hello. <laughs> like, I like me. <laughs> He's showing off now. That's his trick. Okay, you have to go down again. Okay, I'm back. Would you say your lifestyle fits in any of the standard diets? For example, do you try keto or paleo or low carb or Western beach? Uh, you know, the different uh, diets. Right. Um, or alkaline, I, um, I used to be totally alkaline diet, and then right. I switch more low carb and alkaline where I can. Right, right. Uh, I would say in my in my days of studying, when I was um, studying for my degree in nutrition, I, di I did all of them. I tried yeah. all the diets because again, I, I thought, well, I can't possibly prescribe or advise to clients if I haven't gone through it myself. So that was just kind of out of a curiosity thing. Um, and I, I have found that the answer really is that everyone is so metabolically complex and we all have different factors and stressors from our genetics to our environment. Not only what are we eating, but you know, what lineage do we come from? What's our heritage? Do we live on a high road? Do we live what what's the soil nutrition content? So it really is there's no one size fits all that I would recommend to anyone. I'm and I'm speaking as how I eat because you know I need to eat differently based on where I am as well. And when I'm in activities or having children. Or yeah, that. exactly, exactly. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a huge meat eater normally um, for lots of different reasons. It doesn't appeal to me and also, you know, just ethically I find it trickier to navigate. But when I was pregnant with twins, I, and, and um, this new little one, I had very, very low iron levels. And so I had to find out ways, you know, I did my own bone broth from, the farmer's market, the, you know, we knew the farmer. So I found my way around it and I changed my diet and I don't um, stick with a labeled diet. I would say to anyone, the best thing you can do is if you can, if you have access to it, uh, to get your uh, bloods checked out to see one of the most effective things that I had was um, I had my white and red blood cell um, on a kind of a 
my, I'm not a microscope, like a screen, and I could see how different things were affecting my blood cells. And that really helped to narrow down do what was best for me. What's that? Why did you do that? That was through a nutritionist. I can't, it, I think it was metabolic typing. I think that's what the testing that I had done was called metabolic typing. And so I got a very tailored um, list of nutrients for me and also things to avoid. And, it, and there were plenty of things that seemed healthy that would you would call help like um, kidney beans I remember and the doctor was like no the kidney beans don't do anything there's lectins in there that don't do anything good for you so even though a kidney bean sounds like a healthy thing I don't eat kidney beans because it wasn't good for me um, so that was a long answer to your question I don't go for one sort of diet I try to eat very fresh local in season um, organic where you can although that can be tricky too but Homegrown, you know, sprout your own stuff. If I, if I listen, I'm about five minutes away from moving out to the middle of nowhere on a farm and right in oh, growing my own food. I would do that in a heartbeat. We're working towards that. So, you know yeah. what? Even though we live in very, uh, like uh, in London, very central, uh, yeah. I remember every year before Yomzi, pre Yomzi, I remember every year, like springtime, I'd be planting my little tomato plants, my little pepper plants, my this, my that. Once it's uh, nice and warm outside, I take them all out into the balcony and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I you know, I. And I was giving the neighbors some aubergine. <laughs> Good for you. I mean, again, this this is what I feel like we should be teaching in school is is urban gardening, teaching Definitely. kids how to to grow a little urban garden to grow food for their family and be just that much healthier. Yeah, how yeah, about how about that, <laughs> government? I know, exactly. Also, it gives them the appreciation of what farmers have to go through, the agriculture industry. You get people complaining in the middle of winter, oh, why can't I get any nice oranges? Well, guess what? They have to be imported exactly. from far away and frozen. Exactly. We have lost our connection to our food because of convenience. Yeah. Convenience is great, but... That's a big problem in the meat industry is there's a total disconnect as to how you get that ground beef that's in your spaghetti. The process that that meat had to go through, how the animal was raised, you know, it just, it's, I mean, but that goes for not just me. That's again, like the, the condition yeah. of the fruit pickers, you know, how, who, what is the fruit getting picked by people who are paid properly? Blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. We've really lost connection with that. We have, we have, but you know what? Um, we, we're very sustainable in our approach. So we don't eat meat, we're not into meat. Uh, Adrian is allergic to lactose, I'm allergic to eggs, which helps with the whole vegan side of vegan. Yeah. But we never call ourselves vegan because we're not. We, we consider ourselves sustainable. A vegan's best friend is avocados, but avocados right. have been known as blood fruit, literally, Good because point. of how they're grown. How people yeah. get kidnapped by mafias that want to have the orchard and how how like the whole industry is so bad yeah the shocking people. the water like in chile they literally take the water from people who desperately need it and ration it to them in gallons so they can water all these avocado trees instead so yeah so i totally understand what you mean and definitely i think the government should take action in trying to connect the, the new generation more with how things are grown, where they are grown, how animals are reared, all of these things and, and keep it an open book. Yeah, and it, and you know, it's painful for all of us because what it will mean was we, we will have to give away some conveniences and we will have to do with less. It's become in the Western world, such a life of you can have everything you want. Yeah, you just very click cheap. on Amazon, you can get it all, you know. And very you know? cheap. You can have this organic meat for four pounds or organic avocado for four pounds, or you can have this avocado that's had everybody killed for it for yeah. 15 years. Right, right. It's that kind of culture, unfortunately, which we need to change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where do we start? Yes. Just do a podcast like this. There you go. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> Right, this is the last question. And we had different people asking if you had any advice for others regarding their food. I'll be honest, until this day, I didn't know you. You studied nutrition so much and you actually are a nutritionist. But um, I think that even adds more value to the question because the advice you give is actually professional advice. 
or advice from someone who's walked and talked through this, not just talked about it. Right. Um, uh, so advice as far as uh, dietary? Yeah, we can make it bigger if you want. <laughs> yeah, let's make it bigger. Why not? Um, so my, my biggest advice is do your own work, do your own research, because I firmly believe that we are not being taught or schooled properly by the powers that be. There are too many vested interests in keeping people addicted to low quality, cheap food. Um, so I think when people go ahead and take the time, we have no excuse now because we all have the internet. So Google everything, you know, and, and use your own common sense and your own discernment and don't fall for the advertising. Um, just start to take control of your own lifestyle and your own health choices. And, you know, even, even doctors, well-meaning doctors, they don't get nutritional training. You know, they're, they're trained in some really amazing other ways medically, but a lot of uh, doctors, GPs, allopathic medicine, I don't find that they, they don't know anything about yeah, that's the, the food true. pyramid should be flipped on its head, you know? You, so, um, and you know, maybe they're just too busy learning about lots of other life-saving techniques. So I'm not, I'm not um, I don't mean to sound so disparaging about that. I just think that we have the power to inform ourselves now and we have to because the way the status quo isn't working and people don't know and until you don't know you can't change your life so get on the internet and start googling don't believe everything you read also i don't know it's a mess <laughs> not a pin with it with a whole handful of salt <laughs> start with companies like yumsy that are ethical and really work hard to have quality ingredients and care. And also it makes a difference that, you know, your personal story, having been through it, you're not just in this for a profit, you're in this because you had to survive and find a way to not die and pass out from being tricked by coconut sugars. So right. from <laughs> real world advice, it makes a difference that your products are going to be the type of products you would put in your body. Yeah, definitely. Actually, um, we put our product so much, uh, we, we've had so many people tell us, you know, you can reduce your cost and increase your margin because let's face it, until this day, Adrian and I have invested everything into Yumzi. Wow. Until this day, Yumzi has not paid, paid us back. Wow. So <laughs> that tells you for over a year, we've been committed to something we believe in. Um, two years, this That's November. That's huge. Yeah. That's rare. So we always look for, for the best quality products and everything. Because we always think like when we were told, oh, you can make the price cheaper by doing this or that, our first response is, yeah, but then we're not going to eat it. And if we have children, they're not going to eat it. So why would we sell it to someone's child knowing that this is not good for us or our children and we expect them to buy it and love it? So even small things like, like, like for example, eggs are good for people or whatever, but we don't put them in our food because we just don't want to risk anything as small as a day of food poisoning or something like that. It's not worth right. it. Right. God knows how many times we ate the same meal, Adrian and I, and I reacted really bad to it just oh, because wow. of our immunity. So right, right. It's, it's, yeah. So we we have to be we have to be very honest because if we won't eat it or our children won't eat it, we're not going to feed it to someone else. It's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm always curious about things like the executives of Coca-Cola or McDonald's, and I, I just, I'm curious if they're feeding their beloved children and grandchildren all of that garbage. I'm really curious about that because I suspect probably not. The billionaires are probably eating organic, local grown food. <laughs> Thank you. And actually, uh, I have a very uh, close friend of mine who used to work for the tobacco industry. And like one time I was looking at this presentation he was making and I was saying like, you make it look so appealing. I almost want to eat the cigarette, not just smoke it. That's how appealing they make it look. And he was saying to me, yeah. And I said to him, do you smoke? And he was like, no, no. Yeah. You never touched cigarettes. And I was like, but you're working for the tobacco industry. What is wrong with you? Do you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of, um all of the uh they they say how all of the um 
computer programmers and developers in Silicon Valley, like none of them are on social media. They all don't, they don't use wireless devices because they know. They Can know I make a confession? Huh? Can I make a confession? Yeah. I only started my Facebook after extreme family pressuring into opening a Facebook account. And till this day, I don't have an Instagram or any other accounts other than Facebook due to the extreme pressuring. <laughs> Good for you. Keep it that way. It's a smoking so I gun. I understand what you meant about, and also in hotels, like free Wi-Fi, everybody's connecting. I'm like, no, -uh, I'm not mm -mm. connecting. No, I want to disconnect, baby. I want to. I want to go out to the country and get on Ethernet. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> go, go live in a cave <laughs> with my chickens and my sprouts <laughs> and Yumsy deliveries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think about it. <laughs> Awesome, Amy, that was the last question. Thank you so much for your time today. And we love having you with us. I, I'm sure a lot of people loved having you with us too. Adrian was running a story in the background and he was oh. getting a lot of hearts and a lot of uh, um, high tens, high tens, is that what it's called? High fives. High, 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 <laughs> high, 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 high. Yeah. And um, you're getting a lot of love on our social media. I'm sure Anthony will uh. Responding to people and stuff. Thank you so much for the great advice. We did this talk with you, not actually knowing that you are a nutritionist. And the fact that you are just took it to a whole new level. And the fact you're a mom as well who deals with this and from a psychological point, from a healthy point, from everything. So I can't thank you enough for the oh, amazing. My pleasure. Thank you for the chat. I love it's it. Brilliant. I loved it too. <laughs> All right, everyone on the call, on the video, we're going to end the pro broadcast now, and then uh, Amy and I will have a little chat together. Have a Bye, great everybody. day. See you all, and have a great day.